Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the recently released Zombie Army 4, and see how it compares to Rebellion's previous zombie killing adventure, the Zombie Army Trilogy. For those of you unfamiliar with these games, the Zombie Army titles are cooperative zombie shooter games that were spun off of the Sniper Elite titles. And just like Sniper Elite, a big focus of these Zombie Army games is on using bolt-action sniper rifles and pulling off long-distance critical hits on enemies with the occasional slow-motion bullet cam. After the first two Zombie Army games, Rebellion released a collection called Zombie Army Trilogy that remastered the first two titles and introduced a third campaign to help wrap up the story. Zombie Army 4 is the first new entry in the series since 2015. And today, we're going to explore everything from the visuals, available features, and the general gameplay mechanics to determine whether this new title actually improves on the formula. So, to kick things off, let's begin by talking about the presentation. Bear in mind that both games are being played on the PC, with the graphics settings pushed up to the max settings at a 1440p resolution, and the motion blur setting will be disabled for the sake of image clarity. First up, let's take a look at how the character models have evolved. Right away, this is one of the most noticeable improvements that have been made. The lead character of the Sniper Elite series, Carl, returns for this fourth game, and features a few interesting changes. First off, his outfit has been altered a great deal. The armor he was previously wearing along his shoulders and arms have been removed, and he now sports a simple leather jacket, rather than his original military uniform. Carl still appears to be suffering from the same head wound as before, with a bandage wrapped around his head. Though, the wound appears to be fresh now, with blood seeping through the cloth and staining the edges. Oddly enough, Carl seems to be covered in blood all over, and I don't recall there being any sort of cutscene explaining why. It doesn't seem to be triggered after taking damage or anything like that, it's just part of his appearance now, likely as a way to show that the character is more battle-hardened since last time. As for the complexity of the model itself, Carl is now made up of more polygons, giving him a less blocky appearance. Textures all around have seen a huge improvement, with things like his bandage, hood, and facial hair no longer appearing as a blurry mess. This is especially evident when looking at his hairline, that seems to feature actual depth this time around. These improvements can be found everywhere with both the hero character models and the zombies, who now feature far more variety and complexity, and some new bright yellow eyes as opposed to the faint orange glowing eyes from before. The weapon models have seen even greater improvements, with a higher poly count, improved textures, and some new details that can be swapped out thanks to the new customization system, but we'll get into that in a bit. Next, I want to talk about the complexity of the environments. As I mentioned before, Zombie Army Trilogy consists of three games in one, giving it a wide range of levels to choose from, and plenty of variety in the package. The first episode consists of five chapters, all centering around the rural areas near Berlin. Each chapter is broken up by checkpoints, where players can restock on ammunition, so you could expect to spend anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes per chapter. That's a ton of content, but this is to be expected considering it's a collection of three games in one. Zombie Army 4 obviously doesn't feature that much content, but it still is easily the largest episode yet, with nine chapters each broken up by four checkpoints. On top of that, these nine chapters feature some great location variety, with several areas in and around Italy. And the environments themselves are beautifully decorated, with some great use of tessellation to provide depth to the various ground textures, much better looking vegetation fencing off the borders, and higher quality textures all around. It's certainly an improvement, and the new trap objects spread throughout force the player to pay attention to the world more than ever, making it more than just a backdrop. And to help bring out these enhanced environments are the improved lighting effects. Lighting has played a big role in the artistic style of the Zombie Army games, with tons of pre-baked volumetric point lights and static ambient effects. Zombie Army 4 continues this trend to some degree, with fog that rolls in during a zombie horde event and plenty of static point lights. But there's also improved volumetric lighting like God Rays, along with new reflective surfaces and better contrast. The lighting in the older games often washed out details, making characters appear overly red and just not realistic. Zombie Army 4 provides a much more natural presentation, even when the most supernatural things are happening on screen, and it feels more immersive as a result. Likewise, shadows have also seen improvements, with less aliasing around character and object projections and more samples on screen at any one time, again providing a much more impressive presentation. Next up, let's talk effects. 
Now, unfortunately, in order to stay advertiser friendly, I can't detail the refinements that have been made to the zombie gore effects. Though I can say that the damage models have been improved drastically, with more dismemberment points along each model. Whereas the original games were pretty limited to just destroying the zombies' heads, legs, and arms. It's not nearly as impressive as other zombie games, but it's still a step forward nonetheless. Other effects like fire, smoke, and explosions seem to have been improved as well, though the smoke doesn't seem to linger as long in the newest game. So, all in all, Zombie Army 4 has improved visually in just about every way. The character models no longer look like action figures, the lighting is more natural, the environments are more ambitious, but for most players, the graphics really aren't the reason they're picking these games up. The real question now is what does Zombie Army 4 offer in terms of its features, and why is it worth picking up over Zombie Army Trilogy? So let's start this section off by talking about the available game modes and content offered in each game. For the most part, both of these games are practically identical in terms of the available modes. You can boot up any chapter in the campaign to play solo, or you can invite some friends and run through the game together. Additionally, players can also try their luck at the Horde mode in both games offering small arenas to survive multiple waves as you'd expect. But new to Zombie Army 4 are the weekly events, that challenge players to complete a specific campaign chapter with unique modifiers, like no access to a secondary weapon for example. This addition seems consistent with various other online games nowadays, each offering incentives for players to keep playing their experience. And just like those other games, this weekly event offers players some bonuses that can help them progress and unlock new cosmetics. Customization is where Zombie Army 4 really stands above its predecessor. Unlike the simple system before where players simply chose from a collection of weapons and dropped into the game, players can now customize each weapon with upgrade kits to enhance their abilities. Enhancements include things like faster reload, higher damage, and even explosive rounds. Players can also customize their character with different melee weapons, new perks, and even cosmetics after ranking up high enough. What's disappointing though is that Zombie Army Trilogy features far more weapons to play with. There are 9 rifles, 4 SMGs, the STG assault rifle, only 1 shotgun, and 4 pistols. Zombie Army 4 only retains 4 of these rifles, one of which is locked behind a DLC pack. It also has a new double barrel shotgun and seems to only feature 1 SMG and AR. It's a weird step back, and likely leaves room for Rebellion to add additional weapons as extra purchasable content later down the road. While it doesn't necessarily make up for this, Zombie Army 4 does feature some additional heavy weapons too, like miniguns, flamethrowers, and a bunch of new explosive types, which can be combined with item mods to enhance your abilities further. You're also going to need all these weapons to deal with the new zombie types. While some classics like those walking skeletons don't seem to be present anymore, Zombie Army 4 offers a few new foes to deal with, like Creepers, Flame Troopers, and the new Riot Shield Zombies. They all feel pretty well designed, and offer some nice variety to the environments in a way that wasn't explored enough in the original games. So how about the actual gameplay itself? Zombie Army 4 makes some pretty nice improvements to its gameplay. First off, the movement feels much better now, with cleaner animations and much better aiming controls, especially when using secondary weapons. The ability to lie down prone was removed, though considering there's very few instances where you're actually getting attacked by ranged enemies, it didn't really make sense to include that option in the first place. The melee kick was also removed, or at least has been replaced with a new stomping ability, which can be used to keep enemies from being revived and to collect additional supplies from special zombie types. Additionally, players can now activate a special melee takedown that can be used to take down most enemies instantly and can even use a special melee weapon to help free up some room. On top of this, each weapon is also given its own unique abilities, including one that can slow down time Max pain style, or lock onto multiple targets like the Dead Eye ability in the Red Dead games. It's a simple system that really helps to mix up the gameplay, and the reworked combos only add to this more streamlined experience. While most of these changes seem to have been made up to speed up the flow of the gameplay, the changes made to the health system seem to do quite the opposite. Unlike the basic health regen used in previous games, Zombie Army 4 uses a more traditional health bar, with health kits that can be recovered and used whenever the player wants. This discourages reckless maneuvers, and makes ranged enemies like the snipers even more critical targets. It seems like an odd choice, though it does give players a better idea of how close they are to dying, whereas before, it was difficult to determine, especially with numerous zombies flooding the screen around you. So overall, Zombie Army 4's gameplay seems to be an improvement all around. 
The controls are more comfortable, the new progression system is more interesting, and the new special abilities really help to spice up the action. Finally, let's wrap up with a sound comparison. Which game do you think has the superior audio design? And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, Zombie Army 4 seems to be an improvement all around. The visuals have seen some nice enhancements, the gameplay is more enjoyable, and the amount of content, despite the disappointing microtransactions, is still ambitious, even when stacked up against a collection of the original three titles. You're still going to get way more levels to play in the trilogy, along with more weapons to choose from and a heavier emphasis on the actual sniping mechanics that helped to popularize the series in the first place but Zombie Army 4 feels like the next gradual step for the series, and it will be interesting to see if Rebellion resurrects this underrated gem in the future. But what do you guys think? Are you impressed with Zombie Army 4's changes? Or did you prefer the design of the Zombie Army trilogy? Let me know in the comments section. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.